Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, one lady who's passionate about ensuring that South Africans eat healthy food is Rabe Chumukuku. The registered dietitian not only recommends healthy meals for her clients, but she runs a catering business that offers nutritional foods. She is the founder and CEO of Plates and Scales. She joins us now to tell us more about her passion for healthy eating and how uh, we can improve our cooking methods to ensure we get the most out of the meals we prepare. Rabechu, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Now, it's springtime. We are all rushing uh, for that summer body. Eating healthy is a struggle for most people. Where do we all start? Good morning, Levo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, definitely, uh, people are in a rush to find their summer body somewhere, either on their road or in their kitchen. Um, and I always say that... Um, when it comes to healthy eating, healthy living, it's something that doesn't happen overnight. It's something that we do. Uh, we implement the changes slowly but surely, and we need to learn to stick to the changes that we made. Um, so the one thing that I always say is try and stay away from the fat diets, whether it's banting, whether it's cabbage soup. Um, I, I, there's one that says thirst to drink or something. There are so many diets. But the key to a successful and maintenance of good health is to implement slow changes and just change your lifestyle all in all. That is the best way to always find your summer body intact when summer does arrive. Listen, the recent one that I found is people drinking a lemon with black coffee. Now, I've, I've heard the worst, that this one, every morning, apparently you drink coffee with the lemon, a squeeze of lemon. I can never. Anyway. Thank now. you. Oh. Thank you. I just actually want to address that lemon one before. <laughs> Guys, lemon, coffee, what is it, um, cayenne, pepper, and those things, first thing in the morning, all you are doing is you are calling on ulcers and stomach issues because those things are acidic. And just imagine mm. starting your morning, lining it with just acidic, items in it so please i would just really warn people to just stay away from it yeah it's talking about mistakes that people make what other uh, mistakes do you see people making uh when they are trying to head into the healthy direction route um starvation mm -hmm. most people think that limiting themselves or depriving themselves of food is the best way for them to get to that summer body or to get to their weight goals and that is one of the worst things is that okay so fine you might starve yourself and might achieve the weight loss and things like that but the one thing that you have failed to do is to address your own nutritional uh, problems and your, nutri your own nutritional issues you will eventually relapse and bounce back and go back to those habits and you will regain and pick up the weight again. So those are some of the, the mistakes that there's deprivation, there's the no carbs, um, the high protein. So people are always looking for the quick fixes and that's always the biggest mistake. We want quick fixes, we want miracles overnight and we forget that it took on months to pile on, months to years to pile on the weight and yet we want to lose it in a space of a month or so and that is absolutely impossible. That's not how the body works. And that's when we tend to shift towards these unrealistic diets, things that force us to limit our intake, not eat, starve, drink liquids only, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some of the biggest mistakes level. And how important is it for one to you know, improve their relationship with food? Because our relationship with food differs. Um, I remember me growing up, you had to finish what is on your plate. You know, otherwise we're senior. You know, in our culture, you cannot let food go to waste. So even if it's a lot and you are overeating, you were told you can't leave what is on your plate. How important is that to improve your relationship with food? Um, I always say that your relationship with food also is a predetermination of your mental state. Mm. Uh, because the one thing is that when we start, when we don't have a good relationship with food, and let's say we end up with weight gain, that our body then changes. We don't even recognize ourselves. We have fat in places we've never had. And that triggers a low self-esteem, that triggers anxiety, that triggers depression. And when you are in that state, then you want, then there are those people who are emotional eaters. Mm. When they're not feeling well, they eat more. So then um, that means it just becomes a cycle. When you're not feeling happy, when you're not feeling, when you're not feeling well, you're feeling down, you will tend more towards junk than, than healthy food. And then 
that goes that results in just more weight loss, more I mean more weight gain, more weight gain results in a deeper depression and things. So it's really important to make sure that you have a good relationship with food. I always tell people that food is meant to nourish you, and at the same time, you are meant to enjoy it. So you should not want to deprive yourself. You should not want to I, everything in moderation. And then that, 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 that the, the point that you made is that when growing up, you were forced to finish food on your plate. And those are some of the things that, as parents, we get wrong um, by forcing children. And that's when children start to have like a bad relationship with food. And those things need to be, I, I always negotiate with my kids that, okay, um, at least finish the vegetables. So you want to focus on the um, healthy things. So, okay, at least finish the vegetables. At least take one, two bites of meat because if you force them to eat, then they also don't sense when their, 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 their fullness arises. Because we need to teach them that when you set, when you are, when your stomach is satisfied, you need to say, okay, that's enough, I'm okay. Because then we are brewing things like childhood obesity. Mm. Then we are bringing things, other complications so into our children that should not be there. Uh, talk to us about um, when should a person uh, visit a di uh, dietitian? What is the right approach? When do you then say, okay, I need to visit a dietitian? Okay. So um, the one thing that people always think that uh, you only need to see a dietitian is when you want to lose weight. But dietitians do much more than just weight loss. We also see patients who are diabetics, hypertensive, um, people with cancer, people with stomach issues. Uh, it could be your constipation, it could be your diarrhea, um, children with eating disorders, obesity, you name it. So um, I always say to people, when you feel like, when you are now starting to Google things about food, what to do, what not to do, how to, and things like that, then you need, you are well rest assured that you need a nutrition expert because Google is not the answer. Google will not formulate a personalized eating plan mm. who will not help you to sort out your own personal eating issues and help you to address your relationship with food. So when in doubt, please consult a nutrition yeah. expert. I want to talk about uh, your virtual nutrition uh, counsel, uh, counseling. What is offered there? What, do you, what issues do you unpack there? Um, so we unpack literally everything. You find that it's a client who's coming to me and saying to me, um, my cooking, um, I feel like I'm doing everything correctly in the kitchen. I feel like I'm doing this, my eating is like this and things like that, but I'm just not getting to that goal weight or my blood pressure is not improving, my sugars are not improving and the doctor keeps telling me that something is going wrong and I need to consult a dietitian. Then I will sit with you and unpack and understand your story, your history, what are you eating? When are you eating? How are you preparing this food? How much of this you are eating? So then I am able to assist you to say, okay, from my nutrition knowledge, I would advise that instead of frying your chicken, can we rather boil it? Instead of adding spices and salt and the stocks, can we rather use natural things like herbs, your paprikas, your turmeric, so things that are healthy. So I will sit and unpack whatever nutritional issue the client is presenting to me. And what are some of the best stories that have come out of your uh, lessons? Who I think the ones that make me the most emotional level is um, I deal with, um, so I, I, I work with gynees that would refer their high risk pregnant, uh, pregnancies to me. Mm. So these are women who either due to age have suffered multiple miscarriages or they have diabetes or they have high blood pressure and they're just not well controlled. And gynees are really desperate to see their patients going through this journey and delivering a healthy baby. I would then come on board and assist these mothers by fixing and addressing their nutritional issues. Because mm. um, nutrition plays a huge role, not only in healthy people, but also in those who are more at risk. Those cases such as a mother who is pregnant and has diabetes. Yeah. And then we, I take them throughout the journey on a monthly basis. We check and we just confirm. All right. Oh, I think we've lost Rea Beatry there. Uh, Rea Beatry, um, we've lost your sound, but thank you so much uh, for talking to us, Rea Beatry Mugoko, on healthy ways to lose weight and her virtual nutrition uh, counseling. All right, let's take a quick ad break.